Hey guys, this is Kevin Ostello with Fieldcraft Survival. A common question that I always receive is, if I'm a hunter and I get lost, I get turned around, I get injured, and I have to spend the night, how do I spend the night in the great outdoors without dying? Let's face it, in this environment, it's very, very easy to get intimidated by your surroundings, especially when the snow is falling and when there is a fresh coating of powder, it sounds amplify very, very easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the steps you should take if you had to spend an unexpected night out. Uh, I nicknamed it, or my buddy <laughs> told me I should nickname it the Uno, right? The unexpected night out. It's very simple to do. You just have to keep a clear head and you'll be able to get through the night without an issue. All right, guys. So let's talk about the appropriate steps you should take if you decide to take an unexpected night out in the woods, away from home. <laughs> the first thing you should do is have an established stop time, right? It's very, very easy to just keep going and going and going, run your flashlight. Uh, it's very easy to tell yourself, hey, I'm not lost. Super easy to tell yourself, uh, not an issue. But in reality, what you should do is tell yourself, I need to slow down. I need to think about just spending the night and everything's gonna be all right, okay? So now, in an area like this, I know it's kind of hard to see, but everything starts looking like everything else. The only thing that's standing out to me right here is this larger tree, which will make a suitable shelter. When it comes to making a shelter in the great outdoors, you only really need to think about three elements in terms of having proper components. Something to sleep uh, inside of, something to sleep on top of, and something to sleep underneath. Now, if you have selected your hunting clothing appropriately, then you're already in what you're gonna spend the night in. Trust me, uh, and you probably know this already, if you've been sitting in your deer stand or if you've been walking around in the woods and your clothing has kept you warm, it'll keep you warm throughout the night. Maybe with a couple refinements that you might carry in your pack, but you already have part of your shelter on your body. So you should always make it a point not to leave your house unless you have clothes that you can spend the night in. The next thing is finding a shelter like this one, something that maybe the snow cover on the ground isn't as thick underneath it as it is around it. And this will be what you're going to sleep underneath. The last thing that you have to worry about is what you're gonna sleep on top of. In the winter time or in any cold weather, the ground is gonna win that battle when it comes to taking heat away from you. You're not going to heat it up, it's gonna cool you down. It's very easy just to sleep on top of your backpack, put it down, sit on top of it. But something that I found that's very useful is just carrying a garden pad that gardeners kneel on in the garden as a seat pad. And then I can use my bag to either keep my feet warm or I can use my bag as a backrest uh, and just spend the night up against a tree. Okay, so I've set up my temporary shelter and that's how I have to think about it, very temporary. I've got my gardener's pad, which is a very inexpensive investment that I picked up from Home Depot or Lowe's. That's what I'm sitting on right now. I'm sitting cross-legged right here. If my legs get cold, I can always take my backpack and put them underneath my legs, get myself up off the ground a little bit more. I've got a heavy duty sportsman's blanket just to keep the moisture off my back. Now, if I'm wearing wool, Chances are if my wool starts to take on a little bit of moisture and it's really howling through here, really, really cold, that moisture is gonna freeze to the outside, actually forming an ice crust. The wool will continue to keep me warm and believe it or not, that ice crust will actually block the wind. So I'm okay with a little bit of moisture inside of the shelter. I've got something that I'm sleeping inside of. I've got something that I'm sleeping underneath and I've got my seat pad that I'm sleeping on top of. Let's face it. We don't expect to get a lot of sleep on a night like this. We just have to survive until we see the daybreak, until we see the morning. That's all it takes. Now, something that is going to come up is your mind. At some point in the night, you may find yourself battling with yourself. You may find yourself dealing with the, the thoughts that are running through your mind. It's totally fine, right? We're human beings, we're thinking creatures. 
when it's dark outside, our eyes aren't going to work as efficiently and our ears are going to take over, right? Our ears are gonna compensate for what we can't see. Uh, even though we're filming this and I've got my headlamp on and I've got a flashlight so you guys can see what's going on, I'm gonna to try to conserve my light as much as possible and only use it when I need to. I'm also going to do whatever I can to remember my worth and remember why I need to make it out in the morning, right? If I'm a husband, if I'm a brother, if I'm a best friend, if I'm an uncle, I want to remember all the people that will be upset at me for not getting back to them if I don't make it through the night. So that little bit of morale boost might help me push through a little bit of the chill factor and, and get through until that sun rises. Something else that's very helpful and for you Western hunters, this is absolutely applicable, is having the means of creating some sort of, of heat with a stove. I can use a simple stove to create what I need for a morale booster. And something very, very simple, hot beverages, right? Something very simple is a quick meal. These freeze-dried meals, even though you may not plan on spending, you know, multiple days out in the, the backcountry, it doesn't hurt to have a couple of these or even just one of them in your backpack for that unexpected night out. In the great outdoors and in survival situations, it's all about building up little victories, right? Positive mental attitude. And if I can control as many factors as possible in this unexpected night out, then I'm going to make it through the night. If I can get out of the wind, I've just defeated the wind. If I can get up off the ground and off of the coldness of it, I just won again. If I can put hot food in my belly, I won again. And how many hours is it that I really have to stay here until I can see the tracks, I can probably collect my barracks. So I'm gonna do little tasks throughout the night, build up that morale, build up those victories, and in the morning, I'll be able to get out of here. In deciding what type of survival shelter you're going to use for the night, you have to realize there are only four types of shelters. And those four shelters can be broken up into open shelters, right? Where it's essentially this scenario, where I don't have walls around me, even nylon tent walls around me. It's an open shelter. That's the open shelter without a fire. That is probably the coldest night you're going to experience, but it is survivable with the right clothing. I can have an open shelter like this one with a campfire in front of me. Now, depending where you are, you may have campfire uh, wood resources or you may not, which is why you want to carry a small backpacking stove because you can use that to heat water. I can take my metal canteen, heat up water uh, and tuck it next to me and hold on to it for the night. Um, or I can simply uh, use it to, to heat up meals and put the, the hot food in my belly. A closed shelter would be like a backpacking tent, right? Closed shelter without a flame, not a bad option, but you need something like a sleeping bag in order to warm it up, uh, to keep yourself warm through the night. The best option is the one that most people aren't going to carry, but it is an option still, and that is a closed shelter with a fire. If you think of the ultralight backpacking tents that have collapsible stoves, uh, Kefaru makes one. Uh, I like using the sawtooth. It's going to raise the inside temperature of that tent 50 to 60 degrees when the outside could be below zero. Um, it's really the best option for long-term hunting to dry out the loft that's inside your clothing. But given this scenario, I'm gonna work with what I have and that's simply something to sit on, the clothes that I'm wearing, and a tarp that I can tuck over my head. Now, if I don't have a tarp, Something that you may want to carry are contractor cleanup bags, big 55 gallon drum bags. I could literally put that entire bag over my head, cut a slit from my face so I could breathe out of it and do all of my work inside of this area. Another option to carry something very, very lightweight are these emergency blankets. Um, this is actually an emergency bivy sack and this is the two person one. Now, 
I've slept in both the one person and the two person. And I'll tell you, the one person is tight. The two person is roomy. And there are those that will say, well, you have to heat up all that extra space with a two person bivy sack. Well, I'll put it to you this way. There is really not that much more space in the two person. And just for my own sanity, I want the ability to move my arms around so I don't feel like I'm trapped inside of a cocoon. So this is yet another good option that I can pull up around my entire body. Just make sure that you have something covering your head and you'll make it through the night without issue. All right, guys, this is where uh, this video started uh, earlier. And I will tell you that now that the sun is on the horizon, it's a lot easier to collect my bearings. Um, I knew just by looking at my, my watch and referring back to my sunrise chart, how long, how many hours I'd have to make it through, all right? And it's something that I can, I can play in my head, right? Only two hours left, only one hour left, that type of thing. When it comes to surviving the night, it's not an entire day. It's literally just until the sun rises. And when the sun rises, I can now see more than I could the night before. I can now, with less snow coming down too, I can actually see that that's the direction that I came. And I can see on the horizon some of the catch points and some of the terrain features that I can associate with my map and find my way out of here. Every year, hunters get lost. Every year, hunters get injured. Every year, there's going to be some type of scenario where a hunter is going to have to spend an unexpected night out. And by the way, this is not just for hunters. This is for backpackers and this is for the day hiker. Make it a point to leave your house with what you need to spend an unexpected night out. It's not a matter of if it will happen to you. When you do this long enough, it's a matter of when it will happen to you. And like I said, it could be for something very, very simple as getting turned around on a trail. It could be for something very dramatic as, as getting injured. Be prepared for that scenario, right? It's just spending the night, but with the right preparation and the right training, you'll be able to get through it.